We have to pray with expectation. Praying with expectation is praying with faith and faith transforms things. We shape our world with the words we speak. So we want to speak words of life, words of hope, words of purpose, words of destiny. We want to speak words of faith because when we do, when expectation is at work, it's the breeding ground for miracles. So we're going to be in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 41. And it starts with Elijah said to Ahab, go up, eat and drink. Now, I love God because He is so practical and He obviously loves food. I'm Greek, so I really resonate with this. I, I always believe it's the will of God in Christ Jesus that we eat and drink. In fact, I think the translators may have even made an error when they translated the Greek word for fasting. I think maybe they left out an E and they really meant feasting. Now, of course, I'm just joking, but go with me. Okay, he goes on and says, for there is the sound of a rainstorm. So Ahab went to eat and drink, but Elijah went up to the summit of Carmel. He bent down on the ground and put his face between his knees. Then he said to his servant, go up and look toward the sea. So he went up, looked and said, there's nothing. So seven times Elijah said, go back. On the seventh time he reported, there is a cloud as small as a man's hand coming up from the sea. Then Elijah said, go and tell Ahab, get your chariot ready and go so the rain doesn't stop you. In a little while, the sky grew dark with the clouds and wind and there was a downpour. So Ahab got in his chariot and went to Jezreel. The power of the Lord was on Elijah and he tucked his mantle under his belt and ran ahead of Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. This is the word of the Lord. Notice what Elijah did at the summit of the mountain. The scripture says he bent down on the ground and he put his face between his knees. Now, from my perspective, that's an unusual posture for prayer. But in that moment, that's exactly what Elijah did. We are assured this is what he did because in James chapter 5, verse 17 to 18, the scripture tells us Elijah was a human being as we are and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the land. Then he prayed again, and the sky gave rain and the land produced its fruit. So knowing that Elijah prayed and the rain stopped for three years and then he prayed again and it rained once more shows me that prayer actually works, that prayer precedes miracles. And Elijah didn't just send this servant one time to look and see if there was a rain cloud in the sky. No, every single time the servant came back and said, there is nothing. Elijah said this, he said, go again. And Elijah kept praying. So let's count them. Elijah says, go up now, look toward the sea. The servant goes and comes back saying, there is nothing. That's one. So Elijah says, the servant to go again. The servant goes and comes back saying, there's nothing. That's true. So Elijah says to the servant, go again. The servant goes and comes back saying, there is nothing. That's three. Elijah says to the servant, go again. The servant goes and comes back saying, there is nothing. That's four. Elijah says to the servant, go and come back. And the servant does that, comes back and says nothing. That's five. Elijah says to the servant, go and come back. Servant goes and comes back and says, there's nothing. There's six. Elijah says to the servant, go and come back. The servant goes and comes back and says, there's nothing. The servant goes for the seventh time. And the seventh time is when he comes back. He says, behold, a, a little cloud like a man's hand is rising from the sea. And Elijah told the servant, go again. Going again, praying again, hoping again. Do you know how much courage it takes to do that seven times? Seven times when you've seen nothing six times? Because when we go again, there is so much risk involved. We risk being disappointed. We risk being discouraged. We risk being disillusioned. But let me tell you, when we go again, there is also reward. God's word is full of life and hope. But to see the promise and the purposes of God activated in our lives, we have to declare and decree the word of God. We have to pray and speak what he says. We have to risk praying again and again and again and again if that's what it takes to see the promises of God come to pass in our lives. And I'll tell you what else we have to do. We have to pray with expectation. Praying with expectation is praying with faith and faith transforms things. We shape our world with the words we speak. So we want to speak words of life, words of hope, 
words of purpose, words of destiny. We want to speak words of faith because when we do, when expectation is at work, it's the breeding ground for miracles. When I go to the throne room, I believe for God to move. That's exactly what Elijah did. He sent his servants seven times with the expectation of seeing something each time. The fact that the servants saw nothing the first six times didn't stop Elijah from continuing to pray with expectation. I've got to tell you, there's nothing that will test your faith like nothing. I don't want to skip over this point because it's so important. Most of the breakthroughs I've seen in my life have come after an extended season of seeing nothing happen in the natural realm. It's probably the same for you. You've been praying for a spouse and for years on end, it seems like nothing's happening. You've been praying for your kids to change And for months, it seems like nothing's happening. You've been praying for a promotion and it seems like it's never going to happen. You've been praying for healing and nothing seems to be happening. I get it. I am not saying that this is easy. I'm just saying going again is necessary and has a biblical precedent. God wants us to keep moving forward in faith, even in the face of when we see nothing. Nothing will test your faith like nothing. He wants us to keep asking, to keep believing, to keep praying and to keep going. What do you do when you have a word, but you see nothing? In the very first verse we read, Elijah said he heard the sound of rain, but it's not until the last verse that we read that the downpour happened. You can hear things in the spirit before you ever see them in the natural, can't you? That span of time between the sound of rain and actually feeling the rain That is called the faith zone. That is where we walk by faith and not by sight. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 tells us that. There's a lot to be said about the voice of God in situations like this. We hear His voice through His Word. Romans 10, 17 says, Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. If we want to walk by faith and not by sight, if we want to hear the Word of God, if we want to see the promises of God, then we have to keep praying. We have to keep going again. We have to keep believing again, even when we see nothing. So what do you do when you're still waiting on your miracle and all you see is nothing? What do you do when you keep going to interviews, but there's still no job offer? What do you do when you're believing for a spouse, but you're still single? What do you do when you're praying for financial increase, but there seems to be no breakthrough? What do you do when you're praying for rain, but there still is no rain? Can your faith pass the invisibility test? Can you continue to believe God in faith when you cannot see anything happening in the natural? A lot of us go once, maybe twice, maybe three times, but we don't go the fourth or the fifth or the sixth or the seventh until we see a glimpse of the promise. The fact remains that if you and I are going to grasp the promises of God, then we've got to get good at going again. We can't keep stopping just because we don't see a cloud the first time or the second time or the third time or the fourth time or the fifth time or the sixth time. We have to become tenacious Christians who keep going as many times as it takes, going in prayer, going in faith, going in hope, going with expectation. I've learned to take everything to God in prayer again and again. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 instructs us, don't worry about anything. But in everything through prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. In a world that's full of anxiety, full of depression, full of worry and terror, full of chaos and division, we have to get really good at praying again. I think a very big aspect of our testimony in these last days in which we live is that we're going to be able to hold our peace because we truly trust God, because we go to God in prayer again and again. I often say, I, I, I often say things out loud to God wherever I am. If I've got a concern with something in my family, something in my personal life, something in the ministry, I'll literally just talk out loud to God wherever I am. I'm making a decision and I say to God out loud, I'm not going to be anxious about this situation anymore. Father, I've made my request known to you. I have brought it before you. I lay it at your feet and I trust that you are working on it. I receive the peace that surpasses all my understanding. And this is how largely I don't get overwhelmed by the grace of God. Again, I want to say it's not easy to do. I need strength and courage to do this. I'm not always good at doing this. It's often messy in the midst of doing this. But let me tell you, 
I do this, I'm committed to it, and it gets me through in the breadth of what my life entails. I'm not being irresponsible, I'm giving it to God. Sometimes I'll even say to Nick, even as we're going to bed, if we've got something big going on and there could be something happening in the ministry, and once I've prayed and I've done it, I'll say to Nick, okay, you know what? I'm making a decision. I prayed about this thing because the Bible says that God never sleeps or slumbers. So I'm praying about this thing right now. And since God never sleeps or slumbers, there is no point in both of us staying awake. God's got this. So, and I'll say out loud to Nick, I'll go, so Nick, I'm going to bed. If you see the devil, tell him I'm going to bed. I am not worrying about this anymore. It's my way of drawing a line, of putting a stake in the ground of going again in prayer and going again and again and again in faith and expecting that God is going to show up, of not stopping and not getting stuck. I determined that I am going to keep pressing on. We have to become further Christians, Christians who will see the distance and choose to say, I'm going to go again until my kid has that breakthrough. Though my marriage isn't restored yet, I'm going to go again and I'm going to believe God. Although I haven't got a glimpse of that next open opportunity or open door yet, I'm going to keep going. I'm not stopping. I'm going to keep believing God. I'm not getting stuck in disappointment. I'm not getting stuck in despair. I'm not getting stuck in disillusionment. I'm not getting stuck in discouragement. I'm not getting stuck in hopelessness. I'm not getting stuck. I am not looking back. I am not giving up. I'm going to press on and press into the purposes of God for my life, whether I have to go again and again and again and again until I see the breakthrough in Jesus' name. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. I hope you'll share your thoughts in the comments and if you feel led, please share this video with a friend who needs to see it. Thanks so much for watching.